All right, so we have this definition for um, a base of a topological space. And we want to prove that every, separ every separable metric space has a countable base. I'm pretty sure that I already proved this in um, my exercises for Spivak, but I'll do it here as well. Um, so what I'm going to do first is, this is a really quick argument if you do it by pictures, but it takes a while, or it takes a much longer if you want to fill out the details and make like an actual proof. So I'm going to start with the picture just so that you have some intuition and then go from there. So what we're going to do is for every x in x and every open set g, which is a subset of x which contains the point x, I hate that, um, we can find some element of this uh, countable base that's in there. Okay, so anyways, um, so let Q, I'm, I'm actually going to, we need to define something first before this picture argument can be done. So let Q be a countable dense subset of the metric space X. Then we're going to define define B to be um, the collection of all bar, balls of radius R centered at X. However, we specify that X needs to be contained in Q. Of course, R needs to be greater than zero for this definition of a ball of a certain radius to make sense. But we also require that R is a rational number. then B is countable. And why is B countable? It's countable because if you look at the collection of balls, what what uh, data do you have going into it? You have the radius and you have the point X. So the um, you can associate each ball with a unique pair R comma X. And R is taken from the rationals and X is taken from Q, which is a countable set. And the rationals is a countable set. So this pair, R comma Q, is taken from the set Q cross the rationals. And so this is a direct product of two countable sets, and thus the, correct pro the direct product is countable. And so B is itself a countable set. So the claim B is also a base. 4x. And the way that we're going to do this is now we can do the picture argument. So we're going to choose any x, we're going to choose any um, point x in the space and any open set g which contains x. So what we're going to start with is we know that um, the open sets or the topology in a metric space is generated by open balls and so you can draw some open ball around X, which is contained in G. So we're going to say that this is a ball of radius R centered at X. And now we also know, why is, why is everything all curvy? Okay, or squiggly. Should have kept it before. Anyways, we, oh God, these are all worse. So anyways, we know that the rationals are dense in the reals, and so what we can do is we can shrink R a little bit, um, and in sh and we can specify that R is rational, because let's say that this R that I've drawn here isn't rational, you can choose some rational radius less than R, and then you'll still have a ball that um, contains X and is contained in G, but it will now have a rational radius. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take a ball of radius r over 4 centered at x. I'm going to include that. God, it's really difficult to draw on this. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to choose some point y, which is in 
this ball of radius r over 4 centered at x, but which is also an element of q. So r is in the rationals q, and y is in the set the countable set of points Q. I probably should have used like literally any other letter than Q. Um, it's countable, let's call it C. C be a countable dense subset. By the way, we know that a countable dense subset exists because it's a separable metric space. That's critical here. So Y is in C. And then we're gonna choose the ball of radius r over 2 centered at y. And that's going to be an element of b because we've got a rational radius and we've got a center which is in the countable set, c. But because of the way that we've chosen these points on these radii, the ball of radius r over 2 over y ball of radius r over 2 centered at y is going to be contained in the ball of radius r x and thus it's going to be contained in g. So we have an el we have an open we have an element of this collection b which contains the point x and which is contained in g. And so that means that the set b satisfies the condition um, for every x and for every g containing x there is some v in the base which contains x and which is in g. And that means that it, we have a countable base. Well that means that it's a base and we already know that this set is countable and so we have a countable base. Okay, so that's the picture. Um, so that should give us some intuition about how this works, but the pictures can be a little bit deceiving um, so we always want to, the, the, the pictures are a good way to understand the proof in your head and um, picture what's going on. Um, but if you want to make sure that all the details work out, you need to write an actual proof. Okay, so we want to prove that B is in fact a base, so we're going to go through the same argument. So let G and X be open and x in the space x. Nope, it's going to be in g, but g is a subset of x, so there you go. Okay, then what? Then there is a ball b s x contained in g, and that exists because um, balls of various radii, radii are a basis for the for to, for the topology um, or they they generate the topology so we're actually sort of um, yeah we're using that so that's interesting um, if you look at that definition of a an open set an open set is a set where every point is in the interior and to be the in the interior it you it means that you need to f be able to find such a such a ball and that actually means that all the all the possible balls form a base um but anyways that's just an aside all we need here is that um there is some ball like this which is contained in g and of course this will contain x choose some number r which is but which is strictly less than s and it has to be strictly greater than zero because we're going to use it as a radius but we also want it to be rational then x is also going to be in brx and brx is going to be contained in bsx because it's a smaller radius and that's going to be contained in g so brx is contained in g okay so now we look at the ball of radius r over 4 centered at x. This is open. So because c is dense, c intersects this ball. So there is some y 
which is in C, but which is also in the ball, this ball of radius r over 4 centered at x. B, r, and then this ball r over 2 centered at y. Well, y is taken from C, and r over 2 is rational since r is rational. So this is an element of B. And I now claim that x is in br over 2y, which is contained in g. So there are two things we have to prove here. We have to prove that x is in, is in fact in br over 2y, and we have to prove it that br over 2y is in fact contained in g. So x is in br over 2y because y is in br over 4x. So that means that the distance between x and y must be less than r over 4. And of course r over 4 is less than r over 2. So the distance between x and y is less than r over 2. And so that means that x is in the ball of radius r over 2 centered at y. So there we go. Ball of radius r over 2 centered at y is contained in g because if you choose any z which is in the ball of radius r over 2 centered at y, consider the distance between z and x. Well, we are going to use the standard triangle inequality here. So this norm is equal to this norm. I guess I could be using absolute values here. Um, I just like using norms instead. Um, yeah, let's because we're because we're working in. Um, well, no, we're, we're are we working in R? No, we don't know, we're not working in R necessarily, we're just l working in some metric space. And so, of course, this absolute value is um, computed in terms of the metric. So rather, no, I, I should use the metric. So the metric will be D, and we're saying that the distance between X and Y satisfies this. So now we have distance between z and x, and then we use the um, the property of metric spaces so that this is less than or equal to distance between z plus y plus distance between y and x. And now the dis the distance between z and y. Well, y is in the ball of radius r over two. No, z is in the ball of radius r over 2 centered at y, so the distance between z and y must be less than r over 2. And the distance between x and y, well, since y is in the ball of radius r over 4 centered at x, it's less than, the distance is less than r over 4. And then this is like, what, 3 fourths r, which is certainly strictly smaller than r. So, the distance between z and x is less than r means that this ball of this means that z is in the ball of radius r centered at x and so the ball of the entire ball of radius r over 2 centered at y is contained ball of radius r centered at x which we already know is a subset of g okay so x is in br over 2y, which is contained in g. And so um, for any x and any g, you can find an element of b such that x is in that l, x is in that set, and that set is contained in g. So b is a base. And thus, it is, in fact, a countable base.
All right, and this holds for an arbitrary metric space, and so, uh, or an arbitrary separable metric space, and so we know that we now know that any separable metric space has a countable base, and that's what we wanted to prove, and so we're done.